There are three requirements that all nations must meet if they are to establish and maintain their freedom and self-determination in the greater community. This holds true for both nations living in highly populated regions of space, such as is the case of your world, and for nations that live in remote regions, even in uncharted territories where contact with other races can be very rare and very hazardous. The world has been given to humanity as its world of origin, as its place of residence and as a splendid environment in which humanity could evolve and build its civilizations and learn the lessons of peace and cooperation, both by principle and by error. Do not ever think that this world is owned by anyone else, that any other race in the universe has rights to this world or has any special privilege for visiting this world or can make any claims of ownership to this world or any claims of authorship for human evolution. This is your planet of origin. It has been given to you by the creator of the universe with the hope and the desire that you would prosper and maintain this world as the precious resource that it is. It has been given so that it may sustain you through your difficult phases of development and so that it may sustain you as you emerge into a greater community of intelligent life, where such worlds of biological diversity are rare. The three requirements are unity, self-sufficiency and extreme discretion. We shall give you more information on each of these so that you may understand more fully why they are so important and what they really mean and will require. Unity in your world does not mean that everyone is the same, thinks the same or behaves in a similar manner. It can accommodate the diversity of cultures that the world now possesses. But there must be a unity of purpose, a common purpose to protect the resources of the world and to establish a boundary to space where all nations cooperate with one another, not only for their interests in their national security, but for the security of the entire world. This of course will require an unprecedented cooperation between your nations and governments with a greater community education and awareness. This great accomplishment is possible. You must turn your eyes to the heavens. You have no defense against life intruding from beyond. You do not have the skills to tell friend from foe or to recognize a competitor. You are obsessed with the needs of your nation and your difficulties with other nations. You will also need this unity to face the declining resources of your world in the great and perilous consequences for the human family. This includes the environmental damage you have created in your world, the damage to your climate systems, to your water and to other life-giving resources that have supplied and sustained humanity over its long and slow evolution. Human unity now will not be the consequence of ideology but of necessity. For you will fail if you are divided facing the great change in your world. And you will fail in the face of the greater community if you cannot establish this unity of will and purpose. All free nations in the universe must establish this unity of will and purpose particularly regarding their use of their home worlds and their awareness and approach to the greater community. This need, therefore, is universal. Your evolution has always been towards greater unity and cooperation. But now it must enter a more mature phase. For no nation will prosper and remain free if other nations in your world fall under foreign persuasion, a persuasion that will encourage human conflict in order to weaken the earthly powers that you have, and to weaken the strength of the human family, fracturing it and making it more susceptible to persuasion, foreign manipulation and to the need for foreign technology. Your unity must be a unity of purpose, based upon a greater awareness of your vulnerability to space and the fundamental need to establish a sustainable use of your world and its vital but limited resources. Never think that you can go into the greater community and take whatever you want from it. 
for the greater community in which you live and which you will face is owned by others who are far more powerful than you. Your warlike nature and tendencies then must become arrested if you are to gain this unity of purpose and the will and the strength to withstand foreign intervention and persuasion. Human unity here may only be forged under a great challenge, for there is too much division of purpose and intent within your world for nations to establish such an essential common ground. It will be necessity that will drive you to create this, if ever you will. It will be an undaunted and persistent need that will drive humanity to unite in its own defense. Defense against internal collapse and defense against external intrusion. Within your nations and your cultures, there must be this unity of purpose. Or the great resources and talent of humanity will not be brought to bear to face its great environmental challenges and to face the difficulties of emerging into a greater community of life. Humanity's future in the universe will be largely determined not just by foreign persuasion or intrusion, but by your ability to create a sustainable use of the world. Here humanity will have to enter a more mature phase of its development. You will not be able to focus on growth and expansion, for your resources will constrain your expansion, and your growth in the universe will not allow you to reach out and take what you need from other worlds beyond this solar system. Nations who are aware of your presence, who are not intervening in your world, will respect your sphere of influence if it is established within this solar system alone. But beyond that, any intrusions into space or into the territories or worlds governed or owned by others will be intensely resisted. You have boundaries and constraints now, and these are new to your experience, for you have been growing and expanding for so very long. But there are limits to this. Your world will limit you and the greater community will limit you. Unknown to humanity is the reality that great empires in the universe are rare and tend to be very unstable. Unable to supply and sustain themselves over long periods of time. They either collapse at their perimeters or, due to instability, at their core. It is smaller nations and networks of nations that have been able to establish long-term stability with one another through very strictly enforced rules of trade and commerce and through establishing a greater consensus for mutual well-being and stability. Your notions of growth and expansion will have to change. For you cannot plunder the earth without bringing yourself to a devastated state. A state that can be easily taken over by others in the universe. While outright conquest of your world is not permitted in this region of space, other nations are free to intervene under two conditions. First, if the native peoples of your world appear to others to welcome intervention and to not resist it. And, second, if humanity were to fall into a truly deprived and declined state, under the second set of circumstances, other nations would be free to come and take the world for themselves, using humanity as a resource for their own ends. It is these two conditions that allow intervention in this region of space. It is because you live in a highly inhabited part of the universe that conquest is not allowed. For attempts at conquest create instability and conflict and instability and conflict are resisted by networks of powerful nations who seek to maintain stability and security at all costs, even at the cost of their own freedom. It is entering a more stable and sustainable state that all worlds in the universe must seek to achieve at some point in their development.